thank you all for coming. Um, it's a really an exciting chance for us to talk about um, ongoing developments for clinical excellence and research at UAB. Historically, uh, our region has been challenged by chronic disease, particularly as it relate to, relates to kidney failure. And since that's been the area's challenge, UAB has uh, been a leader nationally and globally in transplantation. You're here today from a couple of our leaders who have been outstanding surgeons and physicians as it comes to taking care of patients with kidney and liver disease. And this also is a unique opportunity for the UAB to continue to expand this profile as a national leader in transplantation research. Now, we, we suffer from a number of challenges related to chronic disease, and one of them is organ donation. And UAB alone has nearly 3,000 patients on a waiting list for kidney transplantation. And at the beginning of our program in the 80s and 70s, and 70s and 80s and the 90s, we we're one of the largest kidney transplant programs in the world. And we still rank within the top 10 of kidney transplantation programs in the country. Uh, with that said, we still have nearly 3,000 and over 3,000 patients on our waiting list for organs. And this opportunity today to announce a partnership with United Therapeutics to allow us to be their center of excellence for xenotransplantation gives us a chance to do something that no other center in the world can do, becoming a leader in xenotransplantation, using organs from animals to eventually apply themselves to humans. The leaders of this effort you'll hear from, and this is no small effort both to get here with the size of a grant that's approaching $20 million, a partnership developed out of relationship with Dr. Borge, our Board of Visitors, United Therapeutics, and its visionary CT CEO, uh, Martin Rothblatt, our chair, of, or should I say our chief of the Division of Transplantation, uh, Dr. Devin Eckhoff, and then one of our new recruits who is a leader in transplantation, nationally known as a leader in xenotransplantation, Dr. Joe Tector, who we recently recruited to be a part of our team. I'll ask Devin and Joe to speak more formally about the opportunity of our program, uh, but also talk about their vision for transplantation at UAB to continually grow. But I think for the broader community, this is an exciting day for UAB to continually cast a broader footprint in leadership, in clinical excellence in medicine, but most of all in innovation and care for transplantation that can allow us to lead across the globe. Devin, if you can come share about the broader transplantation program and then Joe speak maybe specifically about Xena. As you know, UAB has always been innovative in uh, transplantation. And as uh, Dr. Vickers alluded to, that the biggest problem in transplantation is there are not enough organs. In this state alone, we have over 3,500 people awaiting organ transplantation, life-saving organ transplantation. We've always tried to find new ways to get people more organs whether that's through splitting livers, doing split liver transplantation, or paired kidney exchange, and using extended criteria donors. But regardless of what method we use and how we push the envelope in trying to get more donors, there'll never be enough. Um, with the new immunosuppression that we have, the patient and grass survival is awesome. So the biggest problem we have is trying to find ways to get um, people transplanted, more organs. Um, one of the areas that's always been exciting and sort of always been the next thing was xenotransplantation, taking organs, primarily uh, pigs is the model, where you modify the pig or the organs and use them for transplantation. There's been some new techniques developed that allows you to change the DNA and change what's on the surface of pig cells that allows you to um, make them more suitable for transplantation in humans. Uh, a little over a year ago, about 18 months ago, we were approached by United Therapeutics as part of their effort to take xenotransplantation from sort of an experimental oddity into clinical transplantation. And we began discussions on uh, a multi-million dollar effort to do this. Um, we didn't really have the, we had expertise in kidney transplantation, immunosuppression, immunology here at UAB. But to, to spur the uh, excitement about that, um, a colleague of mine, Dr. Tector, who at that time was at Indiana, was one of the uh, leading experts in the world. We invited him to UAB to become a lecturer, the Dr. Diethelm lecturer, um, and he gave an outstanding uh, lecture on xenotransplantation and the p potential benefits. And out of that relationship grew this recruitment, and when we got the grant from United Therapeutics, Dr. Tector uh, uh, agreed to come and at least look at UAB and see us a, a potential place to carry his research. Uh, Dr. Tector will uh, expound on that a little bit more, but the other vision that we have, uh, Dr. Tector and I share for UEB is we want to be one of the top 
solid organ transplant programs in the country, if not the world. He has expertise not only in liver transplantation, but small bowel and multivisceral. And we want to partner with the, the health system, the hospital, and uh, make this a spot, a leading destination for people needing life-saving organ transplants from across the world and uh, in this country. So to that end, we're developing new programs, partnering with the hospital to develop those and uh, be able to offer new types and uh, more life-saving transplants to people. Oh, uh, the Xeno transplant program, we're currently uh, got voted on the board of trustees for a new facility that we're creating that we can um, um, modify or do the, our research for these uh, animals. And eventually, we hope to begin clinical transplantation. Um, we have a fast timeline, but within uh, probably one to three years, we hope to do this. A lot of things have to come in place, and uh, some of it's out of our control, but we have good preliminary uh, research showing that, uh, that we think it can be done. And we think there's been a lot of headlines um, in some of the leading journals of new breakthroughs coming through, and they keep happening faster and faster. So we think we're creating an incubator of people with expertise uh, with xenotransplantation at UAB. Dr. Tector's the first, and we hope to recruit a couple more people, a couple more researchers. So we're trying to set the stage for UAB um, to lead this effort. And this will be important not just for transplantation in this country, but there's a lot of other countries and places in the world um, where there's a huge shortage and that, that they actually don't have um, human organ donation like we do. So it could potentially be a worldwide effort and save uh, countless thousands, if not uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of lives across the world. Uh, Joe, do you want to say a few words about your research and what you've been doing? Sure. I'd like to start by uh, saying that uh, my, my team that's coming uh, for the lab is so excited and thrilled to be coming to such a fantastic institution from top to bottom with so much enthusiasm and know-how. And I think it's very realistic to say that this program, if it's not going to be the best in the world, it's going to be uh, one of the very, it's going to be near there. And so, and it's going to be in the mix for a very long time. As far as the xenotransplantation opportunity, I uh, can't thank uh, Dr. Borge and, and Dr. Rothblatt enough uh, for the opportunity. This is something that I've been interested in since 1984, um, and, and it's taken a very long time. And obviously, our ability to genetically modify pigs has improved dramatically. And we're at the point now where, right now, if you put a pig organ into a human being, the human will reject it very quickly because they have antibodies to it. And we have eliminated uh, about, I would think, more than 99% of the sugars on the cell surface that these uh, antibodies bind to. So now what you're starting to see is that the rejection is going to be much more like rejection that happens when you put a, an organ from one human into another. So that, and that's a situation that we have a great deal of experience controlling. So um, it's a really fantastic opportunity. I think this is uh, one of the very few places that I've seen that has the basic science, it has the clinical expertise, it has the leadership with uh, the vision and the courage to try something bold to help so many people. And I think uh, I share Devin and Dr. Vickers' um, excitement as we uh, expand as Alabama's transplant program and, and are looking to become America's transplant program. So I think with that, I'll be happy to take uh, any questions and thank you very, very much. So with, with regards to the kidneys, they would be permanent. So we're using gen, the, the opportunity in xenotransplantation is in a human to human transplant, you have to suppress or hold down the immune system so that it can attack the, the new transplant. In xenotransplantation, you have the opportunity to modify the surface of the cells so that the immune system doesn't engage. So you're able to decrease the rejection response without giving more immunosuppression. That's a good question. And so far, no one has, has, been, has ever gone through the whole process with the FDA uh, getting approval to, to do these transplants. So to some extent, it's going to be breaking new ground, and, and we'll have to see how long that takes. But if it goes as we expect, yes, uh, we're talking about putting the transplants in sometime in the next three years as in, in a small, very focused trial just to demonstrate feasibility. So that facility is designed to have, be able to produce pigs that are clean, 
uh, and they will be the free of specific viruses that the FDA is going to require these pigs to be free from so that they can be used in uh, pilot trials for in humans.